hello everyone welcome back to my channel today i will be sharing with you all my stats from high school that allowed me to get accepted into all the colleges and universities i did um back on my college decision reaction video i received a lot and a lot of requests to upload my stats video and share my stats with you all i know this video was really helpful for me when i was applying to colleges just to see where i was standing um and getting into a lot of the top schools that i wanted to just for some background i did get into ivy league schools top 15 schools and the top hbcus i was accepted into upenn usc um, american university george Washington university howard university spelman college drexel, drexel university and those were just the name of a few of the colleges that i was accepted to um just to be clear these are the stats that worked for me but you do not need these stats to get into the top school that you went to. Everybody has different grades, different classes and everything, different activities, different community service, and that all factors into your application and what the admission committee is looking for. So let's get right into the video. Um, just to start off, I'm gonna give some background on my school. I went to the number one um, high school in DC. And with that, we were a very rigorous school. We focused a lot on standardized testing. We focused a lot on college prep that really helped prepare me for the college application process and for just college in general and I definitely think that that helped me get into a lot of the schools um, that I did so starting in freshman year I began to take advanced courses um, during my freshman year I took pre AP English and pre AP world history so with those classes since they weren't full AP classes they only boosted my GPA by 0.5. So because of that, instead of it being a 4.0 scale, it was a 4.5 scale. So if I got an A in those classes, my GPA in that single class was a 4.5 and that affected my overall GPA. So this allowed me to have my GPA throughout all four years be above a 4.0. So like I said, starting your freshman year, I took pre-AP classes and this wasn't by choice. Because the school I went to was so rigorous, we were all required to take pre-AP classes, those pre-AP classes in freshman year. So I scored A's in those classes in freshman year and by the end of my freshman year, I think my cumulative GPA was a 4.07 and that extra 0.07 came from the pre-AP classes that I was enrolled in and that I passed. So now going on to sophomore year, I began my first AP classes. I was enrolled in AP World History and I also took an extra after school class for AP Macroeconomics. So those AP classes were weighted on a 5.0 scale. So those um, classes definitely boosted my GPA. So by the end of my sophomore year, I think my GPA was a 4.17 because I think I had like all A's or nearly all A's at the end of my sophomore years. So with those AP classes, I also took the AP test and I scored a four on both. And yes, I did send those scores to all of my schools and I did insert those scores into my comment app. So by the end of my sophomore year, I decided that I wanted to join the International Baccarat program. So what that is, is a very rigorous program. And at my school, that program consisted of 18 students and all 18 of us went to the exact same classes every day so we were all together in one group going to each class every single day and we took i think in my junior year we took seven classes so that consisted of ib math i took ib english i took ib spanish i took ib theory of knowledge ib visual arts and ib 20th century world history. Since I took all of those IB classes and those classes are all weighed on a 5.0 scale and I took all of those um, IB classes that really boosted my GPA. By the end of my junior year my GPA was a 4.28. So with the IB classes also comes the IB exams that you have to take in senior year. Um, my senior year my school opted out of taking the IB test so they mainly focus our IB scores on our internal assessments and our different papers we wrote, so our extended essays, the um, IAs, and all of that. So all that combined gave us our IB scores. So looking back at my IB scores, for my IB English class, I was scored a five. For my IB Spanish, I got a five. For my history class, I received a four. For my biology class, I received a five. For my math class, I received a six. For my art class, I received a four, and then I received the grade of a C for both for both my history extended essay 
and my theory of knowledge essay. So in total, I earned 30 points for my IB program. So yes, I was awarded the IB diploma. And I do feel like being enrolled in the IB program definitely gave me leverage in my applications. When I was doing research, I found that admissions committee loved to see students taking IB classes, even if that's some IB classes, or if you're aiming for the full diploma, you'll be taking all IB classes. And I read that that just shows the admissions committee that you're really geared towards taking advanced classes and you're really geared to have a rigorous workload and it shows how much you can handle it. So on my final transcript, I had around 15 IB classes on my final transcript. So I had 15 IB classes, two AP classes, and two pre-AP classes. Like I said, towards the end of my junior year, when I started applying for colleges, my cumulative GPA was a 4.28, and my rank was also a 10 out of 117 students. So I was ranked 10 out of 117 students. I was in around the top 9% from when I started applying for colleges. Then towards the end of my senior year, my rank was, I think, a 7 out of like 115, 110 students. So yeah, my rank went up. Uh, by the end of senior year but that was already after I submitted all of my applications and got accepted and admitted to my schools. By the end of the year on my transcript that was submitted to colleges I had all A's and I think I had two B's. So I think I had a B in my geometry class and I had a B in my IV Spanish class. But the rest of the classes on my final transcript that was submitted to college those were all A's. I was on honor roll and principal's commendation list all four years and yeah so going to my test scores i already said my ap scores and my ib scores going into my standardized test scores i took the sat one time i took it in march of my junior year and i scored a 1200 on it i got a 570 on the English portion and then a 630 on the math portion. So I was only able to take the SAT once because of Corona. I took my SAT like a week before lockdown happened. And then towards those later months in the year, my SAT kept getting canceled and canceled. So I just stuck with the one score I had, which was a 1200. I submitted my SAT score to a lot of schools. Like I submitted it to Howard, Spelman. I submitted it to American. I think I, I, think I submitted it to GW. I think I did. So I submitted it to all of those schools, but the schools I didn't submit it to was the Ivy League schools and the top 15 schools. So I didn't submit it to Columbia, Princeton, NYU, USC, UPenn. I didn't submit my SAT to any of those schools because my SAT wasn't in the range that the admissions committee was looking for for accepted students. So I decided to just leave my SAT out of my application because a lot of schools this year were test optional and that did help a lot of students with their applications if their SAT score wasn't as high or if it wasn't in the range or anything. So colleges don't only look at your numbers. They don't only look at your standardized scores. They don't only look at your GPA or your rank. They also take a look at your activities and also how rounded you are as a person. So I'm going to go into some of the activities I did while I was in high school. Throughout my four years of school, I made sure that I was really involved in the community and that I was involved in school a lot. So I was the vice president of the National Honor Society. I was the vice president of the Spanish National Honor Society. I was on the youth government for Washington DC. I did an intern with the World Bank. I created my own IT business. I was in Make the Challenge Club. I did African dance. I was a part of the international club. I was a part of the African Student Association. I was a part of varsity cheerleading. I was a part of the step team. I was a part of the Women Inspiring Strength and Empowerment Club. And I was also involved in the Lynx International Affairs and Business Clubs. So those are just a few clubs that I was involved in throughout my four years of high school. On top of doing a lot of clubs and organizations, I was also a part of a lot of volunteer work. So throughout my four years of high school, I accumulated almost, well, over 300 um, volunteer hours. I volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club. I volunteer with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. I volunteer at elementary schools, a STEM program, 
at daycare so i just did a lot of volunteer work because i know that colleges really look at how involved you are in the community and that kind of like deciphers like how well-rounded you are so you have the grades activities volunteer work and all of that in one also Throughout my high school, I also made sure that I was in a lot of leadership positions. So as I said before, I was elected as city council official for the youth government of Washington, D.C. I received most outstanding youth award at a leadership institute that I was a part of. And I was also in the Columbia University Girls in STEM um, initiative program. So I made sure that I put that on my application and on my resumes and things like that so schools can see um, how much of a leader I am. So in my high school, I get asked a lot if I did dual enrollment. I didn't do dual enrollment because I didn't have time for dual enrollment. So with the IB program and the rigor it came with and also the after school classes and before school classes that I had to do, I didn't have time to do dual enrollment. It didn't have a way to fit it in my schedule. So I just stuck with doing the IB program and getting the IB diploma. I would do dual enrollment if I could go back because passing a class in dual enrollment and getting an A and or a B and it kind of guarantees that you're going to get that credit in the school that you decide to actually enroll in um, in the university. So I would do dual enrollment if I could go back. And yeah, for my Common App essay, I can just speak a little bit about that. For my main Common App essay, I spoke about the discrimination of Black women in the healthcare field. And I just wrote a personal story on that and my look on that and what I would do to um, fix that and resolve that issue and what steps I would take. So that's what I based my comment app essay around. And I feel as though my essay was really strong and that was definitely one of the things that helped me get into these schools. So throughout my application, I just spoke about how I wanted to enter the medical field um, throughout my application to throughout my supplemental essay. So everything in my application tied in and it was kind of like one story and everything wasn't all over the place. So that did really help me I feel get into those schools so yes I think that's it for the video I think this video was pretty short but I did share with you all all of my stats my GPA my rank the classes I took uh, how I did in those classes and things like that so yeah so if you guys have any questions on how to get into college or anything like that just comment them down below and I can answer them for you all I hope this um, video helped you all for everybody who's applying for college, for every senior who's trying to figure out which direction they want to go with their applications. I hope this helped and I will see you guys later. Bye!